All right. I guess it's 11 um, a.m. already. Let's just get started first while um, the rest of the audience come in. So uh, to be here one who is tuning in with us this morning and um, we're, we're hoping that this event will be beneficial for you so before we begin i would like to invite mark manager of fwd technology and innovation malaysia to give us a production of fwd startup studio which is the organizer of the event today Morning, everyone. Uh, welcome uh, to today's webinar. Just to give you a bit of an introduction to what we're doing. Uh, the Startup Studio is an initiative launched by FWD Group. We're an insurance group based out of uh, Hong Kong, we're operating across Southeast Asia. And the objective of Startup Studio is really to build up the uh, startup ecosystem in Malaysia, all the way from very early stage startups, all the way to investing uh, in them via our VC fund. Hi, Mark. Um, are and, you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Yeah. So the idea behind Startup Studio, as I mentioned, is really to build up the startup ecosystem in Malaysia. Uh, we have our pre-accelerator that's run by 1337 Ventures, and we've seen over the course of the last year and a half, uh, we've run two cohorts, and the growth of the, the cohorts, not just the winners, has been tremendous. They've been growing, they've been doing great stuff out there. Uh, and we can see that in the cohort three uh, participants. So this is, um, we're near the tail end of cohort three uh, participants in cohort three, as well as the others, they've been going great guns. You can see from today's presentation uh, by Nikhil and Livewell, they're one of the, the current top 10 uh, participants in cohort three. The idea here is, it's, it's, the idea here really is to show the growth have uh, startups collaborate with each other. We've had a couple of startups in cohort three who have agreed to, to collaborate. They found opportunities to work together, spaces where they could cooperate on. And it's really uh, great to see companies such as uh, Live Well. Uh, Nikhil, I think that's probably a younger photo of yourself. Um, get into the space, share their experiences and, and their learning. So over to you, Nikhil. Thank you, Mark. Yes, that is true. That's a younger self of mine uh, before I started Livelle. <laughs> so yes, a lot has happened, including loss of hair. So uh, thank you. Thank you, 1337 and FWD Startup Studio to give us this opportunity. Uh, we, in the course of next 30 to 35 minutes, we're going to share about our views on how cryptos or how blockchain is influencing the insurance world and how platforms such as Livewell and others are in a better sweet spot to take the positioning of gamifying the insurance experience or being more relevant from a millennial standpoint. And this is our take on how we see the world it may not be aligned to a lot of you, uh, but this is how we believe that insurance could be made more relevant from millennials in, in, in the world in which they operate today. Uh, so this is our attempt to showcase uh, how the world would really look like, whether it's blockchain, crypto, or NFTs as such. So I'm here joined by my co-founder, Vikas Dar, uh, who's also going to participate in terms of Q&A. And we'll keep the Q&A for the later part of the presentation. So I'll just straight away move on to our presentation for now. Safa, I'll be taking up the screen. Yep, go ahead. I, I hope you can see my screen clearly and you can hear me clearly as well. Uh, we are a blockchain-based insurer tech currently present in Vietnam and in India. Uh, we have over 127,000 uh, active users on our platform and over 27,000 insurance policies which have been sold. We are part of a regulatory sandbox in India where we are experimenting the entire gamification of an insurance products from a, a millennial standpoint, from a bite size standpoint, and using health, active health data and blockchain to provide better uh, meaningful insurance solution for a market like India for now. 
So my presentation would be covered in two parts. Uh, first and foremost, we'll talk about how blockchain world is evolving and how insurance is uh, you know, in the right position to take the benefit of a beautiful technology like blockchain. Why blockchain has a lot of other use cases as well. And we will also give you an idea about how what we are looking at building in LiveWell across different markets as well as including Malaysia. Uh, I'm uh, Indian by origin, I've spent 20 years in banking and financial industry, worked for various insurance companies in the region, uh, starting from India, Hong Kong, and in Vietnam. So a large part of my experience has been in the emerging market space. Uh, I used to lead uh, Aviva Vietnam as their deputy CEO and uh, have been interested in the blockchain space since 2017. Unfortunately, didn't buy Bitcoin back then. Uh, but was really fascinated by the entire uh, value of what blockchain can do from an insurance standpoint. Uh, I am into fitness for the last five, six years. I've ran various marathons and Ironmans, and that's where LiveWell becomes a core part of who I am and what LiveWell stands for, which is to reward fitness, wellness, and also provide value to younger generation who takes their health seriously and make insurance a lot more connected. Uh, 2019 is when we started with LiveWell, and today we are proud that we are in two markets and we are looking at entering into a third market, which is Malaysia. Now, uh, just to caveat, I'm not a crypto expert. I'm not an expert to give you a portfolio advice. My portfolio right now is probably negative 95%, so I'm in no position to give you advice on cryptos or what you should be doing. But the intention is to make it very simple for anyone who's interested in understanding what an insurance concept could look like and how blockchain as a technology, how crypto or tokens can find its way in an insurance life cycle from a customer's standpoint. And again, uh, we do understand crypto is blockchain or even uh, all, all the words associated with it have an implication from a regulatory standpoint. And again, I'm not taking a stand from a regulatory, so I'm not speaking on behalf of regulation in any of the markets where we operate. So this is our personal view of how LiveWell uh, is looking at the industry and how blockchain or uh, cryptos can really make a difference. And we'll try to make it as simple as NFTs today, which is a buzzword for a millennial or, or any younger generation, especially in the markets where we operate. Vietnam and India has one of the highest penetrations of NFTs and crypto users across the world. So we'll try to make it as simple, as uh, easy for anyone to understand. So before we move on, uh, the context around uh, you know, what we are looking at setting up is, you see, blockchain as a technology has a lot of implication and probably we all are aware of the use cases around blockchain not just from a financial services standpoint, but from a day-to-day -day standpoint as well. Of course, the likes of Elon Musk have made cryptos uh, very, very popular. And last year, at the same time, uh, there were countries who were adopting uh, Bitcoin as their legal tender. There were countries who were opening up a regulation when it came to cryptos, NFTs, and so on. And compared to what it is today, where the entire market is buzzing and talking about the crypto crash, but what is really striking is that nobody is dismissing the fact that blockchain is here to stay. The advantages of blockchain is far supersedes than what crypto is going through today across the market, where, where regulations and governments could have a different view, like markets in India, for example, regulations have come out quite strongly against calling bitcoins or other cryptocurrency as a legal tender, and they are taking active steps, but nobody has uh, has a negative view about the inherent benefit of what blockchains uh, can literally do or how the technology can be utilized whether it's nfts whether it's smart contracts and so on so our perspective towards uh, today in in this conversation would be to give you an overview of how blockchain as a technology and tokens can find its way within the insurance space now, insurance industry, we all are aware it's a very, very, very old industry. Uh, we are a 300 year old industry where the likes of Prudential and various other companies have dominated this space. Today, what you see of some of the large insurance companies is accumulation of various mergers and acquisitions which have happened over a period of time across different geographies. What it leads to is legacy system. What it leads to is the same way of selling insurance which has been 
there's nothing wrong with that because this industry is all about trust. This industry is all about who stays longer. And because you want an insurance company to be there more than you because so, so that the claims can be paid, so that your family is assured of it. But again, how, uh, how insurance companies can probably take a leaf out of the new age technologies is something which we're going to talk about today. Because insurance, no matter what, it, it is fundamentally a trust business, but it is also a least trusted business. We all are aware of it, that we don't know if our claims will be settled or not. We don't know whether our family members would be able to get a claim or not. And it all goes back to which insurance company have I bought my product and what their stability really looks like. And hence, we believe that insurance is in a sweet spot to utilize a technology like blockchain to make it relevant for a customer and to build that trust via whether it's customer service, whether it's touch points, whether it's gamification, whether it's product innovations, as, as the case may be. Now, this is a kind of a survey which, uh, you know, across the world where insurances or insurance business or insurance industry has been seen very low trust and a low engagement or a low customer service point. And hence, we believe that blockchain or uh, and its associated product lines can really make a difference from a customer standpoint. Now, the benefits where we believe the blockchain and its related products can really make a difference for an insurance industry and there have been various use cases which insurance companies have taken up whether it's allianz when it comes to smart contracts and claim settlement when it comes to flight delay whether it's customer engagement platforms such as lemonade who has done a fantastic job in the us to build that equity based system or whether it's about health insurances or auto insurances which can be driven basis blockchain based uh, solutions now, what we have seen and where we feel very excited about is the micro insurance, the bite size insurance in the emerging markets, whether it's crop insurance, whether it's simple health insurance or term insurance or a personal accident insurance products relevant for millennials, relevant for younger generation in markets where the penetration rates is very, very poor. You know, in Asia, we all know the insurance penetration has been a big, uh, big issue from a regulatory standpoint because every country is looking at increasing it. And all the more during COVID, it has been seen that this is an important parameters for regulation as well as the government's to really focus on. And we believe that companies who can adopt blockchain, companies who can adopt variations of blockchain can actually help to penetrate these micro markets and create niches in a product category which will be driven basis blockchain, not just from an acquisition, but customer management and passing on those benefits to, to the end customers. We've seen uh, products around crypto wallets. We all are aware of that there are uh, fraudulent uh, cases which have happened where your wallets have been hacked or you know large exchanges have been hacked. So there are companies which have come up with innovative products to, to ring fence or protect your crypto wallets as well as at, the, at an exchange level as well as at the customer level. But where we feel quite excited at Livel is the whole digital payment solution business, where we believe today, Crypto loses its value because there is no offline benefit, we believe, is available for a customer. And if we are able to showcase that your tokens can have a real world benefit, whether it's protection, whether it's relevant products which can be provided to you when you want to convert your tokens into a meaningful product line. And that's where we feel insurance could really feel, uh, come into place. And that's where we believe that digital payments could really make a big difference. And there are uh, lots of companies across the world, across the globe, uh, who have really taken off, uh, you know, leaf out of the, what's been happening on the blockchain side, and they have been quite developing the, their product propositions, whether it's POCs or whether it's full market, uh, full market execution as well. So, likes of AI, likes of Allianz, for instance, likes of Lemonade, for that instance, in the insurance category, have been quite a forerunner. From the insurance standpoint, we believe the key focus has been largely towards fraud prevention, largely towards policy creations and customer service, and also streamlining operations, which, for example, medical reports, which can be shared between different insurers or can be shared between different network providers, which can be uh, utilized by insurance companies to reduce the time it takes to underwrite a customer. 
Now, where we believe as LiveWell, we've been able to identify a sweet spot for LiveWell to be more relevant for millennials. And again, I'll, I'll come back and connect the dots on why millennials are so important in this entire user story is around the digital payments. It's around providing value to your tokens or providing value to your insurance purchase in a more meaningful format. What I mean by that is a couple of things using crypto payments or using cryptos as a means to pay your insurance premiums in some form or the other using uh, you know uh, even providing you with wallet protections uh, which has been done in some of the other markets as well or even simply rewarding you for making that insurance purchase in form of tokens now there are various use cases and at live well we are trying to dabble with the first and the third use case right now where we are in a position to provide tokens for doing that meaningful purchase, which is your personal accident or a health insurance or a cancer insurance. And you're able to uh, monetize that particular decision making in form of tokens. Now, what you do with that tokens left up to you, but we also provide you with avenues where these tokens can be utilized for your future insurance premium payments, or it can be utilized for getting any other insurance products through our platform. The other, uh, the other mechanism where we are looking at is, is to move away just from cryptos to NFTs. Well, today, NFTs has been a phenomenal craze across the world. While we do understand there is an inherent value of NFTs and it's a tradable value, which, uh, which we believe can in, uh, we as a live well or in a, as an insurance company is in a sweet spot to actually leverage that is making the entire insurance policy because you purchase a policy which is a unique identifier for you for over a longer duration of time it could be 10 years 15 years 20 years whatever that looks like for you now that can be given in a non-fungible token format which can be shared with your family members as such so we believe that this is something which will catch on especially from a millennial standpoint because you're able to provide not only a value for their tokens but also provide them with a, a, a an nft which helps them to make the insurance product a lot more related Insurance products, uh, unfortunately, have been, you know, the big bunch of 40, 50 pages of insurance policies, which you keep in your locker or in a PDF format. But we are trying to make it more relevant for you by having this in an NFT format, which can be uh, you know, shared across to your family members. So there are different use cases. Again, it depends on regulation to regulation. NFTs in most of the markets are uh, acceptable. And they are allowed um, as as uh, and allowed as a con uh, allowed or considered as an asset, whereas crypto payments are considered illegal in some of the markets. And there are ways around how tokens can be uh, replaced in form of you know giving rewards and incentives. And the benefit for an insurance company there is to work with partners like LiveWell who are in this space actively. So uh, as an insurance company, you are not. Uh, really going head on when it comes to regulatory standpoint, it's the distributor who is taking a call on how this how these products need to be positioned from a from a customer standpoint. And again, why we are emphasizing on this point is very simple. World over, we have seen this, and I'm sure this is relevant even for Malaysia. It's the younger generation who owns most of the cryptos. It's the younger generation who is owning most of the NFTs. It's an unfortunate reality that a younger generation who does not see a value of having an insurance policy, but sees the value of having a crypto or an NFT, which may or may not protect his or his uh, life savings in the future, as we have seen with the crypto crash currently. So again, how do you make an, an industry who is 300 years old versus a, 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 a trend which is just catching on in the last three to five years time? So making it more relevant for the target users which we're going after, as well as making it more relevant for the markets where we operate. So markets where we operate, like Vietnam, I mean, literally, you can actually buy a coffee uh, using a cryptocurrency. Now, that, as per regulation, is not allowed, but the reality is, uh, it, is, uh, it, it, is it has a very high acceptance in the market, and so is the NFTs, and so is the, the approach of an insurer towards uh, catering to this particular segment as well. So again, what we are trying to connect here is how do you make it relevant for a consumer, whether it's tokenization, whether it's NFTs, but the larger part of it is to use blockchain as providing value to the customer at the end. Um, where we believe the challenges would be ahead 
it's a question of jurisdiction. Uh, the you know the interesting part about tokens is you cannot restrict it to a particular jurisdiction. When you have tokens, it has to be utilized wherever the uh, wherever the wherever the user is, and you have to provide the value for a user across the board. So it, then the question comes out: How do you control the jurisdiction? The question then comes in is what kind of products can you come up with and how do you regulate these products and who is going to approve those products, whether it's going to be Ministry of Insurance or, or it's going to be Ministry of Finance or how does that really look like? So again, the question is how do you ensure customer protection when it comes to any anything happening wrong and whether it's from an insurance product standpoint or whether it's from the token standpoint. Also, what is allowed versus not allowed? I mean, today there is no clear regulation as such on what is allowed when it comes to tokens, NFTs, or uh, using underlying technology like blockchain, or the way the insurance products can be created around this entire uh, uh, around this entire technology. But these are things where we see uh, regulations opening up. Recently, in Vietnam, for that instance. The government has actually set up a blockchain committee to look into financial services, to look into the use case of how financial services can utilize the uh, utilize not only just the blockchain tech, but also how tokens or uh, NFTs can be utilized from an insurance stand, or not from insurance, but from financial services standpoint as well. So again, these are uh, some of the challenges where we believe that while Web3 has a great potential, but these are some of the challenges which we're going to face across the market. But as long as customers' pain point has been addressed and we keep it focused on what is the value for my customer, when I do any of these things around uh, you know, blockchain or uh, metaverse, where does the value proposition really sit in? And I think regulators have been open to such initiatives and ideas, including markets where we are operating, whether it's Vietnam or India. So some of the use cases, and again, my my final comment just on the context around cryptocurrency is that you know we are, we are not saying uh, that this is this is an industry which is going to take off uh, quite quite uh, in an aggressive manner. But what we are saying is there is a proceed with caution. There is a, a need for us to evaluate everything well, where it comes to how this technology or how tokens can really make a difference from an insurance standpoint. There is an issue when it comes to insurance companies adapting to it. Uh, for us, for example, when we work with different insurance companies, uh, as a, when we take the products, there is a lot of scrutiny around how this is going to be made, uh, uh, how it's going to be made relevant from a customer, whether it's a regulatory part, whether it's capital requirement, et cetera, et cetera. So again, all of those things need to be considered into prime. The, the issue with that is the, the, the turnaround time for products to go out in the market will be fairly slow. Of course, the last one is the cybersecurity part of it. How do you ensure that the tokens or the cryptocurrency which you're giving to a user or storing it for your user remains to be secure? Because this is a, definitely a huge battle for any provider to ensure that these uh, security loopholes are being covered. But there is no shying away from the fact that there is a lot of work happening, whether it's cryptos, whether it's NFTs, whether it's blockchain as a tech in the insurance industry, in the insurance space. There is underlying benefit of distributed ledger, and we believe that this is the way how Web3 would be taking shape when it comes from an insurance standpoint as well. Now, where we believe uh, LiveWell stands to be in a position, now I'll cover what LiveWell is doing in this particular uh, area. Oh, we, are, we are at a cusp where we want to be seen as a new age insurer when it comes to the younger generation which we are targeting as such, where our health data, your health data coming from these watches or coming from your smartphones is available on blockchain, where you're being rewarded for making those purchases of insurance in forms of tokens or rewards. Uh, we provide you with NFTs related to your insurance products. When you have a base product, you add a rider to it. There is a different NFT which comes out of it. And of course, uh, using the value of settling the claims using smart contracts. So again, the entire proposition can be built around blockchain with different value system being created for the benefits which from a, from a customer standpoint. So again, a, a, an insurance product for keeping millennials in a perspective. So today we operate an application which connects to your uh, smart devices. We reward you for all your healthy activities uh, which you do. All your health data is stored on blockchain. You get various challenges. You get uh, the entire insurance products being gamified 
from a from a you know, from a health and wellness standpoint, depending upon what activities which you do, and then you get rewarded in live well coins. Uh, today, where we stand is we we are at a cusp where we provide insurance products without underwriting, keeping in view that it's a bite-sized insurance products where your premiums are determined basis what you wear on your wrist or what you do on your application. And the entire journey for you, whether you get a token or whether you get an NFT, all of this is gamified from the start to the finish of an insurance journey for a customer. Even more, we are now in a position of launching NFTs related to insurance. So for example, we are looking at providing insurance NFTs or uh, gamifying the entire experience which you have, uh, have on our application as an NFT, which can then be traded or can be shared with your family members. We also have our watches. These watches come along with NFTs uh, in the markets where we're going to be operating. And we believe that this is where the millennials will be excited about the insurance proposition, which we're trying to create in a markets like Vietnam, Malaysia, as well as in India, making it more relevant, making it more uh, sizable for them to see as an insurer who speaks their language and operates in their world itself. Where we believe uh, the entire ecosystem really plays upon is, uh, you know, especially on the health and fitness side, where you're able to provide different uh, different products, whether it's insurance or financial services product, based on the health and help them tokenize the entire activity which they do within the application itself, and that's what makes it more relevant. Now, you would have heard of a lot of move to earn projects, like there, there used to be about, uh, you know, uh, game projects which where you earn uh, tokens basis, the kind of games which you play and the kind of activities, and there were move to earn projects which have taken up a lot of steam, whether it's Sweatcoin, whether it's uh, Step In, whether it's Carlo, etc. In, in the region. And what we believe is, that's where insurance really comes in, right? Because how do you make it more relevant that yes, you're moved to earn, you're earning tokens, but what do you do with those tokens? How do you in utilize those tokens? And that's where LiveWell or propositions like LiveWell can come in, where we provide value in terms of insurance products or the entire ecosystem where you can use your tokens to purchase NFTs or watches or gym membership. So making it really relevant for users to see, hey, uh, I'm, I'm not just living in a virtual world, but I do have an off virtual world experience of utilizing what I'm creating for myself. And that's where we believe. Now, in comparison to some of the uh, you know uh, traditional players, of course, I've I've only picked up the the, the major players who've been there for many many years across the board. We believe that again, being Web three enabled, whether it's tokens, whether it's smart contracts, or whether it's NFT, is very very relevant and very important. Not only from a cost benefit and a customer experience standpoint, but also from a usability standpoint, where you're able to provide of value to a consumer, not just from an insurance, but also from a future uh, perspective, whether it's tokens or an NFT as such. And that's where we believe LiveWell is much better position uh, in, in, in order to connect the dots when it comes to a younger generation out there who is probably not looking at insurance favorably unless something happens un uh, unto it. But now, in at LiveWell, we've used blockchain in some form or the other. Uh, when we started this company two years ago, where today all your health records, all, all your health data is available on blockchain. We are now in the process of launching our own NFTs, where your insurance products, your insurance policy, as well as the purchases which you make, such as uh, you know, the watch which you're which you're purchasing through our platform can be made into an NFT and provided to you. The entire journey which you have on our application of purchasing different insurance products, today you purchase a PA, tomorrow you want to purchase a cancer, you want to add a rider to it, all of that experience can be gamified and we uh, can be provided in the form of NFTs. We are now waiting for regulations to smoothen out where your rewards can be tokenized and these tokens can be provided uh, as an investment option for you. Of course, the, you know, it is all subject to the regulatory risk and as well as the markets, but we believe that the regulation will open up and will have an open eye when it comes to tokens, when it comes to rewarding people in tokens. It's already happening in India. There are lots of players who reward you for day-to-day -day purchases, whether you order on your food app, whether you purchase a Nike voucher, et cetera, using Bitcoin. 
giving you rewards for bitcoins and these are fairly popular method so why restrict it to your day to day why not take it and extend it to even your insurance products for that matter and that's where we believe regulations would also be looking at it so we are looking at launching our own tokens towards q1 2023 once this whole wave of crypto crashes um, you know settles down we believe that uh, we we can connect the dots when it comes to insurance tokens nfts and health and wellness in a beautiful format which is relevant for from a millennial or younger generation in the markets where we operate uh, we've had some pretty good traction so far uh, we have around 330 million live well coins in circulation we sell around three products in the market around 126,000 users are there on our platform across different markets where we where we think the the value would be is if you are active if you are healthy and if you do all the right things you can actually move up in the value chain of uh, of the entire gamification uh, just like you start off as an immature you become an experienced person uh, and then you become a pro and you're able to get different benefits which you can unlock whether it's tokens nfts or just sheer value of different insurance products which can be gathered from our platform so that is uh, what a uh, you know narrative which we wanted to share our view on the world of insurance scriptures as well as how blockchain could really make a difference uh, we are here to create an insurance uh, product or insurance business which rewards you know the younger generation to see them insurance a lot more favorably in the language and in the way they operate today which is uh, in the space of metaverse and how making it relevant with NFTs and cryptos as such. Thank you. That That is a short and brief uh, on my side. All right. Thank you so much, Nikhil. So um, there's some questions here from the audience. Um, a question from Dinesh. What does a token provide its owner and how can a token be backed by a physical asset? Okay. So, uh, Dinesh, thank you for a good question. So here at LiveWell, where we are looking at working out is the tokens are provided based on the activities that you do on our platform. And those tokens then can be utilized towards purchasing, whether it's a watch, whether it's a gym membership in Vietnam for that instance, or even purchasing it towards an insurance product. So we are trying to create a value where these tokens can be utilized different across different offline products and services which can be provided to you which does not restrict you from purchasing an insurance product so it's not just the tokens but also helping you when you make a purchase through a live well platform and its insurance partners we are able to provide you with live well coins which then can be converted into tokens as you wish if you don't like what we show you you can convert it into bitcoin or any other coins as you favorably would see all right, I hope that answers your question. Um, the next question is from Chong. What will be the next big thing that will be brought into the insurance company? What do you think? I, I feel, uh, as my experience working for insurance company the last 11 years, I feel the value of uh, smart contracts when it comes to claims adjudication. It's going to be a big piece of which will reduce the time it takes to uh, to to process claims when it comes to especially debt claims. That is, I feel more and more uh, adoptability is done by insurance companies. It's going to have a huge impact for a customer when it comes to pricing, as well as the entire experience for a customer when it comes to debt claims to their family members. So smart contracts definitely would be a big, big plus, which I feel if insurance companies across the world could adopt or uh, especially the large ones could adopt would make a big difference for a customer. All right. So I hope that answers your question, Chong. Um, next question is from Shobana. Hello, Nikhil. Looking at the crypto fluctuations in the current market with no regulations, how will we ensure the policy value is not affected? Also, how will we manage the premium payments? Good question. And this is a problem which we are currently struggling with, especially when this whole crypto crash happened. So there are two ways how we are dealing right now with where we are in a position where we give live well coins for every activities which you're doing on our application, whether it's an insurance purchase, which happens through cash today. But we give you live well coins for making those purchases. And whenever the timing is right, you can always convert it into tokens. Whenever you see a value of crypto market increasing, you're able to convert that. That is one use case which we are exploring right now. 
The second use case where we feel if the regulation permits, today the regulation does not permit crypto payments. There are changes in regulation happening where digital payments, where di like in India, they're talking about digital rupee, which is a form of a digital currency, which will be available for people to make payments. And we believe that uh, such kind of uh, regulatory changes can actually allow us to hedge the risk of fluctuation, which would happen when it comes to cryptocurrency side of it. So either you see it as a reward for making that purchase decision, which is purchase in the real cash or fiat currency, or you see cryptocurrency or tokens as a way of offsetting a future premium towards uh, uh, renewing an insurance product or purchasing an any other insurance product. Of course, regulation would play a very important role. How regulators view purchase by tokens as a way of uh, recognizing a legal tender. Right. All right. I hope that answers your question. The next question is from Yasmin. As the tokenization of crypto enters the marketplace and intersects with real world physical assets, does this mean that getting the accounting done will only become more complicated? Absolutely, it, it will become more uh, complicated. We have seen instances, uh, for example, Tesla last year had a, uh, in their balance sheet, had a way of recognizing Bitcoins and the fluctuation which happens in Bitcoins in form of a result. So definitely this will have an implication in terms of the way the accounting practices are followed, how tokens are shown in the balance sheet, not only as a distributor, but also from an insurance company standpoint. But I don't think insurance companies need to go there at this stage because there are lots of value benefits which you can extract when it comes to reward. So let's start with only first use case. How do you reward an insurance purchase in form of tokens or allow a user to convert those tokens into any other currency which they would like to enter using their own wallet? So here the question is not about managing the entire ecosystem or managing the entire value chain. Because if you start managing the value chain, then of course the accounting and the re regulatory aspects will come in, as especially for an insurance company. But from a user standpoint or for a distributor, yes, this is a big challenge on how do you show this on the balance sheet of your company. All right, hope that answers your question, Yasmin. Um, the next question is from Ashikin. Who are the biggest losers as a result of the tokenization approach of crypto in insurance? I don't think there is any loser in this case. Uh, I, I think it's it's a lot more valuable than why, why should insurance be away from tokenizing the entire uh, experience or rewarding a user uh, from, from that perspective. Uh, I the only loser would be anyone who does not adopt uh, or does not see the value of tokenizing the entire experience when it comes to insurance or insurance payments or premiums or the entire value system or ecosystem which you're trying to create. So it's only the people who don't adopt it and don't realize that you're not talking in the language in which the target user or the target segment is today attuned or looking forward to. Even banks are now looking at it, right? I mean, Morgan Stanley for that instance, or even the banks here in Singapore are talking about uh, you know, using tokens or providing value where you can purchase tokens using your credit cards for that instance. So again, it's just a question of who does not see this as change or who's, who has a naysayer approach that, you know, uh, it's not right, uh, then you're the one who will be losing out. Right, yeah. Okay, so the next question is from Rishabh. Is LiveWell focused only on healthcare or does the technology also unlock the exploitation of verticals such as vehicle insurance, i.e. drive well to earn? Uh, unfortunately, we're very focused around health and wellness. And we believe that health and wellness has a direct implication when it comes to your insurance product purchase decision making. Uh, we haven't seen a use case around you know, using your variables or tokenizing the entire uh, aspect around the different insurance products for now. Also, it's not our forte, hence we have not dabbled into uh, vehicle insurance or any other insurance products right now. It's only focused towards health and life. All right. So um, does Liquor accept crypto now? A question from Breath. Right now, we don't accept, but we do intend to start uh, Q1 of next year. Um, following up question from TK, how is bringing in emerging technologies such as blockchain relevant in a traditional insurance business model? 
I think uh, it goes back to the blockchain today, keeping crypto aside, blockchain as a technology has an inherent benefits when it comes to claim settlement. We have seen that use case when it comes to travel insurance, when moment your flight is delayed by 30 minutes, your payments are made automatically into a bank account. Done in India, done in uh, Europe, also been done in Asia as well in some of the other parts. So definitely there is a lot of use cases around uh, managing the entire process, which used to be run by traditional companies using lots of resources, lots of paperwork, can be made redundant by use of blockchain when it comes to smart contracts, especially smart contracts. The second area where we've done, like Hong Kong has done it with Midas, one of their blockchain initiatives, which allows insurance companies to share information when it comes to fraudulent claims so that the insurance companies can rely on that data and that becomes an immutable record which uh, which an insurance company can rely upon. So there are lots of use cases around utilizing this to reduce the turnaround time, to reduce the efficiency uh, in, in, in the current process, to make it more uh, customer focused so that the pricing advantage can be passed on to the customer. So definitely blockchain as it's the way it is, can be utilized across different use cases at a different stage of a company. So even a company like a Pru or AI who's been there for a long time, definitely sees the value of what can be utilized using blockchain. All right, hope that answers your question. Next question from WC. How could an insurance policy in the form of an NFT be transferable to another person when both the original owner and the receiver are having totally different risk profile? Okay, so when we say an NFT version of an insurance product, what we mean is not the benefit of the insurance policy, because you're not passing on a benefit from me versus to you. But what I'm trying to do is to create that as an NFT, which has a tradable value outside and which can be shared with the family members so that it is created as an asset in your wallet or in the store or in the exchange where you're looking for. So the intention is not to pass on the benefit or not to pass on the risk which an insurance company has taken on me for giving that policy, but is to make that entire policy in a format which is a lot more relevant for a younger Because today, that policy kit has no value except for the benefits which, uh, which comes in front. So what we are saying is that policy kit can have a value in a virtual world in form of an NFT. And that's where we are trying to make it more relevant for younger I mean, today, a board uh, ape, which is a very popular NFT across the world, sold for millions of millions of dollars. There is no inherent value. There is no inherent uh, uh, offline value which you can extract. And hence, that's where we see a value of an insurance product, which can be NF uh, which can be made into an NFT, can be shared with your family members. And that's another way of sharing your policy information with your family members so that they don't lose track of what you have. Today, that's a big challenge in an insurance industry because your family members or our family members don't know what insurances do we have or we have been covered with. Yep. All right, next question from Eason. Do you already have the NFTs for your product? If not, what is the bottleneck or challenge? So we are looking at going live in the next 30 days time. We have just recently announced a partnership with Pandora Finance, which is our uh, partner who is going to be creating NFTs, uh, NFT marketplace for LiveWell. We, we will be launching this in the 30 days time. So the first NFT, what we are looking at creating is these LiveWell smart watches. These are insurance embedded watches. These smart watches come along with two and a half thousand dollar worth of personal accident no questions asked and these watches once you purchase these watches you can also get an nft equivalent value of uh, the watch in the wallet uh, in in livewell wallet itself so that's going to be in the next 30 days time the next obvious uh, outcome of that is your insurance products or the fitness journey being uh, being provided as an nft so in the next 30 to 60 days time you're going to be seeing that coming from livewell all right uh, another question from kareen how does blockchain technology facilitate in improving the effectiveness of loyalty programs? We are the first, uh, I, I would say we've seen the first hand benefit of how a loyalty program uh, can really benefit from uh, blockchain tech. One of the use cases we have really seen in LiveWell is around A, we are able to trace back on how the point systems have been utilized by a customer. We know exactly the status of how the customers have been utilizing it and also the interoperability between different partners. So 
we have roughly around 60, 60 to 65 partners on our platform. And it makes it a lot more easier to convert these live well coins when it comes to partner benefit. The other area where we have seen is fraud, frauds, uh, fraud prevention. Uh, before we adopted blockchain, we used to have a lot of time spent on investigating frauds where user would have a very high activity level and they would rake in a lot of live well coins. After implementing blockchain, we've managed to cut down where we are able to identify a user history who cannot uh, tamper with what coins he or she has got, cannot tamper with his health records, and we are able to keep the system fairly clean when it comes to frauds being committed by a certain group of users who want to, you know, who want to undercut a system and earn a lot, lot more liberal coins. And hence, we've seen blockchain being able to help us trace and also provide an immutable track record for such customers. So that has been really helpful. It has actually saved us quite a lot of dollars since we have implemented this because it makes it so much easier for us to keep track of our users and how they are using the loyalty points and also with our partners. All right. Um, next question is, since you mentioned that it is a coin, oh. Yeah, since you mentioned that it is a coin, may I know if LiveWell has its own L1 blockchain network to run on? Okay, so we started with LiveWell coins as a term uh, two years ago when crypto was not that relevant from a health and wellness standpoint. There were no move to earn projects, et cetera, et cetera. So we saw this as an opportunity to start, uh, instead of calling it as LiveWell coins, we started calling it as LiveWell coins because our strategy was to get into tokens. Today, we are not tokenized. We are not operating as a tokens because of the market conditions where it stands today. Uh, we will be launching our tokens towards Q1, and we are in the process of deciding which uh, platform to be utilized to tokenize our LiveWell coins, which is currently 350 million in circulation. So we are not using L1 for now. Our blockchain database is on Hyperledger for now, which is uh, keeping health records and all our points uh, system on Hyperledger. Okay, hope that answers your question. Um, next question is, do, you, do your company rely on agent? Normal people tends to prefer agent due to difficulty in understanding insurance products. So, uh, you know, this is something which I've seen uh, in my insurance career. I mean, agents do a fantastic job of uh, educating the market. The agents are so much relevant to uh, back then as well as now when it comes to insurance penetration but they are relevant when it comes to complicated insurance products investment products uh, you're looking for a universal life you're looking for critical illness covers and all that's where agents play a very important role uh, for us we provide bite-sized simple insurance products which anyone can understand in terms of cover in terms of underwriting and in terms of benefits which the customer gets so our focus largely has been direct to customer and embedded insurance so when i say embedded insurance we provide insurance products through gym membership so you purchase a gym membership in vietnam you get an insurance cover of fifty thousand dollars no questions asked anything happens to you in the gym outside of the gym is covered by LiveWell. Same thing with our watches. Uh, you know, you purchase this, you get a, a you know accidental damage cover, and you also get a personal accident, and you get a term insurance along with this particular watch. So our our focus is towards a younger generation who understands basics of insurance and who's willing to try products which are relevant around health and wellness, and that's where. So we don't use agents because we don't feel that our product fits what an agent can do when it comes to complicated products. Our products are fairly simple to understand and bite-sized. Okay, before we go into uh, Mohandeep's question, there's a follow-up question from Michael. Um, so your, your coin is token, right? Because it is not L1. Yes, so our coins are currently reward points on our platform, which will be converted into tokens starting Q1 of next year. What does that mean for a customer that they would be able to redeem? So if I have 10,000 LiveWell coins in my wallet today in LiveWell, I would be able to convert 10,000 LiveWell coins into Lyft tokens starting Q1 or next year. Now, what you do with those Lyft tokens, you can, you know, you can put it in your wallet and convert into a Bitcoin or your Ethereum or whichever currency you would like it to be. But if you don't do that, you always have the avenue of converting and using it for insurance. 
or purchasing a watch or purchasing a gym membership through our platform. Right. And I see um, Vikas has raised his hand. Vikas, maybe you would like to add on to this? Yeah, Vikas, go ahead. Yep. Thank you. So, so um, right now, the token that we have. Um, I can't really hear you, Vikas. Can you hear me now? Is it better? Yeah, much better now. Is it better? Hello. Okay. Yeah, much cool. better. So, uh, what I was uh, what I was trying to tell you tell you is like uh, what Nikhil was uh, saying. That's exactly uh, exactly what we have. So, this is right now the credit points that we like the credit points that you might be getting on your uh, on your credit cards or any other products that you might be using. But for L1 tokens. That is our that is our next uh, next thing that we'll be doing towards Q1 2023. Um, L1 tokens or social tokens. So between these two, so social tokens would be majorly an loyalty mechanism for our users. So like one of the questions were, how do you maintain loyalty? That is, uh, there is a new uh, new term, and because blockchain, uh, cryptocurrency, all of this is an ever changing uh, thing right now. So social tokens for loyalty and an L1 token to be introduced um, just at the beginning of Q1 23 uh, to which would not be a direct uh, direct issuance of a cryptocurrency on an activity within the application, but that would be an uh, user consent conversion done uh, by a user into into different uh, into one uh, L1 token that would be live well token and then further. And we don't give them mechanism like Uniswap does or uh, Pancake Swap does to convert it. They can transfer that to their Uniswap, uh, uh, or Uniswap wallet or any other wallet to make that transaction. So we will only give them the tokens that they have earned um, on level and con they can convert it outside of the platform. So conversion is not the game we get into. We do into like only move to earn or social tokens as an uh, on the platform. All right. Thank you, Vikas. Um, I see that Mohandeep's question is quite long, so I would like to uh, welcome Mohandeep to maybe unmute yourself um, and maybe ask those questions. Um, Mohandeep, are you here? Yeah, sorry, I was mute, of course. <laughs> uh, uh, Nikhil, my few questions are actually on the basics of uh, what you guys are doing. I mean, definitely it's a fantastic app with all these fitness points and people making it millennium, but I don't really feel what the value add with the NFT, blockchain, all these things are actually offering you. I mean, using the points and converting those points we are using it for last don't know 20 years just go points are still there right? all those things are still anyways there i mean i really don't understand the real maybe my knowledge is not there but i don't really nft i've heard recently is i mean this whole ape thing is already kind of gone and nobody really care about that anymore there will be still some but do you really think these things are really needed? I mean, you said millenniums want the latest stuff, NFT. Do you really think, I mean, I talked to my son, do you want an NFT? I mean, I never got any. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand the business utility of this. I mean, talking these words definitely looks very, but what you are doing otherwise, a core business, like insurance gives me a value, insurance, right? If I got hurt or whatever, that is the value. Not if that insurance is in an NFT that will give me any additional. I hope you understand what I'm trying. I want to understand how this thing actually is panning out. Yeah, that's my first question. Actually, I think I have two more. Uh, uh, do you want to shoot all the other two questions as well? Or do you uh, want us to answer on this one first? I, mean, I, I think we'll start because all are different actually. Okay, fair enough. So our hypothesis here, uh, Mohdeep, is very much similar to you here. Uh, for us, we see a value of blockchain not only to help improve our processes, where smart contracts can actually help us to pay claims on time without any paperwork, helps us to keep your health data secure on a hyperledger, which is available on LiveWell platform, helps us to give that comfort to a reinsurer to trust the data which is coming from your devices um, only, or coming from your smart app, uh, which can help us underwrite you better. So that's the first use case where we believe 
uh, the value really comes back to the user where you don't have to share your medical history. All the data coming through your application or through your smartwatches actually helps us to underwrite you better. Blockchain only helps us to ensure that the proof or uh, you know the data is obviously not tampered with in the due course of we doing the underwriting decision. The other element, Mondi, where it really makes a big difference is the whole smart contracts. Today, for instance, term insurance payment or term insurance claims take a lot of time, largely because of the verification which needs to be done when it comes to debt records, which delays or increases the times of claim payment to a customer. Hence, we believe that smart contracts, which LiveWell is working on, can actually reduce that amount of time which it takes for a family member to file a claim. Even so, where we can actually make a debt claim settlement in 24 hours of debt claims hitting a blockchain network for us. So that's a value which we are able to provide, which is the core of an insurance product that will pay the claims on time and pay the genuine claims belonging to our customer. And that's where we, we feel the whole blockchain piece really helps. Now, where does the tokens and NFT really comes in is to make insurance products a lot more relevant for younger generation or for a generation who cares about an insurance company or an insurance product which offers a lot more than just the policy benefit which you have today. Uh, and hence, tokens is another form of a way of a reward which you are able to monetize. Today, loyalty points cannot be monetized. You cannot see that in your bank account in some of the cases uh, when it comes to financial services. And that's where we believe that your insurance purchase done through LiveWell can be monetized into your bank account, whether it's through your cryptos or through an investment form or through other products which we provide. And that's where tokens really comes in. The other element of NFTs, you're right, it's more of catching the fade right now, which is about NFTs and younger generation finding it more valuable. So if I am I'm able to make a term insurance or a health insurance product interesting for a younger generation, I have caught them and got them into an uh, ecosystem, which is valuable for them from an insurance standpoint. So that's the hypothesis uh, mode where we are working on. Now, what is the market response? We will know that in the next three to six months time. Can I be proven wrong? More than happy to be proven wrong. But we believe that uh, to make insurance product relevant, you need to adopt the trends which is happening around us, and whether we like it or whether we don't like it. Okay, I'll and, take uh, it. I'll Mr. see you after three months. But but the th see the the thing is, uh, let me let sorry, me go a little, little bit. My let me what go a little thinking? back, right? So there are lots of standards on HIPAA and on all kind of stuff to procure, to protect your data, your uh, medical history, everything, all those things are there. Putting blockchain, I mean, I really don't know whether it will increase the security and fraud. There are uncountable frauds happening in the crypto, the whole world, right? You can't even count how many frauds and stealing have happened. If the core of the blockchain couldn't save themselves you know the whole crypto is based on the block if they cannot save themselves do you think it can save the other industries and other people in preventing the frauds i i have my own doubts i don't know whether it will actually will uh, will really uh, can help yeah it's a ledger it's a distributed all those things are fine but whether it will really save you from fraud I really doubt uh, because I don't see that happening. I mean, in last two years, uh, the whole crypto thing, you just can imagine hundreds and millions of people are stealing here, this exchange, that exchange. Like, like, like I think there was one question on the, the, the tokens backed by assets. I don't want to want that thing to happen, but suppose after two years, you guys close down the shop. What happened to the token? I bought all the policies, this one, that one. What, what is going to happen to my tokens? Will, I, will there be any asset backing those tokens? uh which 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 i can actually benefit i mean i hope you are understanding i'm i'm a little bit old guy and these, these things doesn't really <laughs> yeah no these are genuine concerns which any consumer should be having and that's why we are in a process of providing such kind of ring fences around now hacking yes of course crypto exchanges can be hacked and we are not a crypto exchange what we understand is insurance business, what we understand is reinsurance and how to provide products based on your activity data. And that's where we are trying to make the best use case of what blockchain can actually enable when it comes to claims, when it comes to bringing in new users into the insurance ecosystem by ensuring that we we are providing value whether it comes to tokens or NFTs. You're right. 
tokens have a long term implication because this is what you're creating for a long term wealth and you would need a provider who's there for a long term and looking at the recent history where exchanges have closed overnight or providers have closed overnight becomes a bit of a challenge and that's where we uh, you know it's it's more on us to ensure that credibility is out there that livewell is a serious play and not a fly by night operator when it comes to tokens it's a long journey uh, something which i don't think uh, would happen in, in the course of few months time all right cool. all so, the best from my side thank you <laughs> Thanks, Mandi, for the questions. Um, I do see some questions coming in the chat box sure. as well, but uh, we are running out of time, so uh, we're going to have to wrap up soon. Maybe, Nikhil, you can drop them your LinkedIn or maybe your contact details, and they can uh, reach out to you separately uh, if they have any more questions. Sure, right. sure. Uh, our, our, uh, we'll, we'll share the LinkedIn as well as uh, we're happy to have these conversations again. We are also learning along the way. I mean, and uh, Vikas and I have spent time in technology and in insurance for quite some time. So we are also learning this as we speak to different, uh, different parties when it comes to regulators as well as to consumers as well. So happy to have this conversation again, but again, Safa and 1337 and FWD team, thank you for giving us this opportunity. I hope this was quite insightful on what can be done. All right. Thank you so much, Nikhil. Um, last but not least, before we actually end the session, I would like to just introduce everyone here to the FWD Startup Studio Pre-Accelerator Program. So as mentioned before, uh, we are actually opening, opening up applications for our fourth cohort this coming September. So if you have a startup or an idea in any one of these verticals that you see here, um, feel free to submit your applications to our pre-accelerator program. And uh, through this program as well, you will be able to gain knowledge on product development, customer development, market development, as well as gain access to key industry leaders, funding and mentorship support. So you can either, um, I believe Erin is dropping the link in the chat box right now. Um, you can either click on that link or you can also scan this QR code here um, if you are interested. And for your information, the top winners of the program will walk away with 150,000 ringgit Malaysia in investments. Right. Um, next, we also have another Web3 um, related topic, which is demystifying NFTs that is taking place on the 17th of August with Miss Lily Wu, who is the co-founder of Wild Pixies NFT. So if you are interested, please feel free um, to register for this event as well. So um, if you are also interested in like the overall Malaysia startup ecosystem and you would like to find out who is building what in the Malaysian um, startup ecosystem, um, head on over to our muruku.com, which is basically a one-stop platform for any startup related data, insights, news and resources. And um, this is something that we will be constantly, uh, constantly updating as well. So uh, feel free to check it out by clicking the link in the chat box or by scanning this QR code. All right, so last but not least, um, we would love to hear your feedback and we really, really appreciate everyone for attending this session today. We hope that the session is useful and valuable for you. And if you could just um, help, help us to fill in this quick feedback form, th this will really help us to basically um, further improve our events in the future. All right, so we look forward to seeing all of you in our future FWD Startup Studio events. Thank you so much for joining and tuning in today. Thank you so much, Nikhil, for your time. Um, we'll see you guys in the next session. Sure. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time and for all the questions. Thank you. Thank you.